There's a major problem with Ethereum. It's got bad gas. But there's a solution. Layer 2 is a solution that you can actually invest in. The problem is that it gets complicated fast. It's hard to determine which Layer 2 might take the cake, benefiting from Ethereum's massive market share. So I decided to do a deep dive and build an actual research report on the topic comparing the top Layer 2s. And by the way, this entire research report and much more, including access to live coaching and trade signals every single day, will be available through our exclusive membership, Finova, linked in the description below. Oh, this site is my baby and members seem to love it as much as I do. So make sure to check that out. In order to explain why layer twos matter, you need to understand the problem with Ethereum in the first place. Ethereum will undergo a major upgrade and this does a lot of exciting things. It'll be 99% more energy efficient thanks to the proof of stake consensus, meaning it won't require miners anymore. Then eventually it'll utilize something called sharding, not to be confused with sharding. Yeah, this is what my content has fallen to. But this increases transaction throughput by essentially taking Ethereum from a single lane county road and expanding that to a 64 lane mega highway. But there's one thing it won't do reduce those gas fees. Easily the most hated thing about Ethereum will stay. The reason for this is the upgrade will have an impact on the consensus layer. And unfortunately, gas fees are paid on the execution layer. So the fees that you pay right now will simply go to people staking, not the miners that it currently goes to. So of course, this is a major issue. The average person just can't afford a $20 transaction cost. And in order for this technology to really, really benefit humanity, it needs to be affordable. Enter layer twos. This is the long-term solution to Ethereum. Projects like like Arbitrum, Optimism, Polygon, and others are built on top of Ethereum in order to improve efficiency and lower cost to transact on the network. Ethereum by itself will not be cheap anytime soon. So these layer twos will produce a ton of value and we'll continue to see them control multi-billion dollar market caps. A big issue in crypto is definable use cases. What problem does this project actually solve? Well, with Ethereum layer twos, that question has an extremely simple answer. It saves the end user a ton on transaction costs. But how does it actually do that? The most popular solution is what's called a roll-up. There are two major types of roll-ups, optimistic and zero knowledge, or ZK for short. We won't go too in-depth on the differences between the two, but all you need to know is ZK roll-ups are slightly less secure and more efficient, where optimistic roll-ups aren't quite as efficient, but they do have the same level of security as the Ethereum mainnet, which is super, super secure. But how do they actually save you money on Ethereum transaction fees? That's the important thing. So imagine that your job is to add up numbers on a calculator all day day. Dream job, I know. All day, they're just being thrown at you. 37 plus 12 plus 57. You're just punching away at your TI-86 all day long trying to keep up. And this is expensive because you have to charge the customer every single time you hit that equal sign. You are Ethereum. Now imagine someone comes along and says, hey, what if I do some of that math for you? People can just send me the numbers, I'll add them up, and then I'll just send you the total. Then you can just pay me once for a whole bunch of people. That's a roll up. So instead of punching in the three numbers, 37 plus 12 plus 57 to equal one the roll-up can just send you the single total of 106. You're doing far less work and the customers get to split that fee three ways. This is how roll-ups save money. They take a bunch of transactions, do the hard computational work off-chain for hundreds of individual transactions before finally sending Ethereum one single transaction to go ahead and post to the blockchain. The results are good security with insane efficiency. In fact, using a roll-up can reduce gas fees by up to 100 times. Now this brings up something else important. Blockchains classically run into a problem called the trilemma. There are three major issues, but life isn't fair, so it's really only feasible to solve two of those three. It's kind of like a video game where you only get so many stat points and you're left like, well, I guess I'm gonna be the unluckiest person on the planet so I can be as charismatic as the rock. <laughs> Anyways, the blockchain trilemma is decentralization, security, and scalability. Ethereum put all of its stats on security and decentralization. A blockchain like Solana went with scalability and security. However, because of that, it's not as decentralized. Pretty much no one decides to skimp out on security, which makes sense because they literally deal with currencies and it's super important. But the point here is that a layer two is essentially the intersection of this trilemma, helping to bridge the gap on these three major focus areas. Layer twos are able to specialize specifically on scalability because they get to rely on Ethereum's robust security backend. It currently transacting on Ethereum doesn't really make sense unless you're dealing with thousands of dollars because the fees will just eat away at any potential profits of a trade. A layer two will open up use cases like microtransactions and make the blockchain more accessible to people all around the world. Now, 
It's not quite all sunshine and roses though. Layer twos do have a few downsides, but before we chat about those, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, iTrust Capital. iTrust is a company that allows you to put crypto assets into a Roth retirement account, and this does two exciting things. First, it means that if you're a long-term holder of crypto, you can avoid all capital gains taxes on your wins, which is absolutely huge. But it does another thing. I don't think this is talked about enough. See, within a retirement account, you can make trades and none of those trades are subject to tax on gains. There's no capital gains. This means you can use one of these accounts as a long-term trading account and pay literally $0 in tax on your wins. They'll be linked down below. And if you use that link, you'll actually get $100 in Bitcoin for free for joining. Now, the downsides of layer twos. First, it can remove the liquidity from the primary blockchain. If a layer two were to get insanely popular, like more so than Ethereum itself, this would draw money out of Ethereum, which is needed for that system to work properly. That's not great. Second, it might not play so nicely. Ethereum is built to work well with others. When you have layer twos communicating with other layer twos or other programs, things can easily start to have problems. And third, there are just more opportunities for security risks. By the nature of money flowing through another system, there are just additional things that can and will eventually go wrong. On to your butts. So now that we understand what they do, let's go through a few of the most promising layer twos. Here are the top five Ethereum layer twos by total value and currency locked on their platforms. And you might notice that Polygon isn't on here and I'll explain why in a few minutes. Arbitrum is extremely dominant, commanding more than 50% of the total value. However, you can see that Optimism actually has slightly more average daily transactions. Transaction fees even vary between these layer twos from as low as a penny to as much as 50 cents plus. In terms of unique addresses, Optimism also takes the cake here. But what's crazy is in terms of both value locked and transactions, Arbitrum and Optimism rival even some of the largest blockchains. They're currently ranked 10th and 17th in all of crypto. That's crazy. And what you might be wondering is how you actually use a layer two. Now this can vary from platform to platform, but let's say you wanted to make a swap on Uniswap and get the low transaction fees of Arbitrum. You just need to visit Uniswap, connect your wallet, click the drop down to Arbitrum, accept the pop-up, and you're connected. Now you'll just need to go to the Arbitrum token bridge, send some tokens over from Ethereum to Arbitrum, and you're good to go. Now, in terms of market cap of these layer twos, there's quite a bit of variety, and this is, of course, ever changing. Loopring has the largest market cap, with Optimism in second, and Arbitrum has no market cap. And the reason for this is they actually don't have a token, despite being the largest in terms of total value locked, which is kind of weird. And there have been rumors in the past that they'll do an airdrop in the future, but there's just no confirmations on this yet. Now, breaking this down further, we can see some of the individual risks of these layer twos. And I need to thank L2Beat.com for making this information accessible. It'd be much more difficult without them. We won't go too crazy in depth here, but what you need to know is that every major layer two is still under development and have underlying risks associated with using and investing in them. For example, take the risk of funds being stolen, which is obviously bad. A risk to every one of these five projects is there's no delay on code upgrades. This means it's not impossible for an upgrade to happen that could be detrimental to the ecosystem and you would have no notice ahead of time. Is this likely? No. But is it possible? Yeah, theoretically. Arbitrum also carries the risk of funds being frozen. This would happen if the centralized validator goes down. And if this were to happen, there would be no way to produce a new block of transactions to go ahead and get your funds out. On the plus side, Arbitrum's daily transactions and addresses have had a steady increase over the last year. Now, DYDX has the same code upgrade issue as well as some small issues like the risk of being censored. This would happen if an operator refused to include transactions of your specific wallet when creating a block. Again, unlikely, but it's possible, so it's good to bring this up. Now, I wasn't able to get all of DYDX's transaction and address metrics. However, their TVL has been relatively steady, but their market cap has seen a large decrease for many, many months. Optimism has the same risk as Arbitrum, where user funds could theoretically be frozen. Optimism's TVL is quite healthy, and so is the increase in their unique addresses and transactions. This indicates a strong reoccurring user base and utility, exactly what you want, exactly what you're looking for in these layer twos. Loopring has the same risk of funds being stolen and users potentially being censored. However, it seems to be on the healthier side in terms of risk. Their market cap and TVL have seen a very sharp decrease. And by the way, if you appreciate this content, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Now, there isn't a ton of available transaction data for Loopring. However, their unique addresses have consistently increased over the last year, especially the last six months. Matus Andromeda has the same risk of those funds being stolen, as well as some additional risks that include the potential for a large dishonest validator to win a dispute versus an honest validator hurting the system which of course would be 
terrible. Their TVL and market cap have been hit quite hard. Now, despite the risks here, and because again, life isn't fair, Matus actually has the lowest fees when compared to the other options that we've chatted about today. And if you'd like an even more in-depth look at the risks, there are additional pages on this research report, again, available on finova.finance, link down below. Now, for the project you've all been waiting for, Polygon. The reason I separated Polygon from the rest is at current, Polygon is more like a proof of stake sidechain. The other projects that we talked about derive their security directly from Ethereum. Polygon is a bit different, but it is massive with daily transactions, unique addresses, and total TVL quite a bit larger than the rest on this list. In fact, if we go back to that TVL comparison, Polygon is the sixth largest compared to all blockchains. Again, insane. Polygon has seen growth in users and transactions are healthy despite the current market conditions. Polygon is one of the most exciting projects right now in terms of helping to solve that trilemma problem that we chatted about earlier. So which of these is the most likely to succeed? I wish I knew exactly. But I think an investment in layer twos could use a bit of diversification just to be sure. Arbitrum isn't investable, so that one's out of the question. But I think diversifying into both Polygon and Optimism would yield the highest odds of success given usability, utility, ecosystem growth, and developer strength. However, of course, this is my personal opinion and not financial advice. I don't claim to be a fortune teller. What I am sure of is Ethereum is here to stay. These projects are still under development though, so they're they're not the most user-friendly right now, but anything that can take the success of Ethereum and make it widely available around the world will see massive growth. 